<laughs> Shubhas Chakabarti! You made it! Welcome to California! You're late. It's a little strange. Most people don't know what Silicon Valley is because there's no definable landmark like the Statue of Liberty or the Eiffel Tower that sort of says this is Silicon Valley. And it's so spread out that a lot of people get off the, the plane at San Francisco or San Jose airports and, and they rent a car and they're like, well, where, where is it? Where is Silicon Valley? Deja vu. What's that? America, California, freeways. <laughs> How can this be deja vu? This is your first time here. Everything you've seen before in a hundred movies, a million TV shows. I'm being bombarded by cliches. Where are we going? Something I want to show you. <sighs> there it is, the valley. Silicon Valley, the most beautiful place on the face of the earth. And what it is, is it's a, it's a collection of it's a collection of people who, you know, want to, want to change the world, you know, either for profit or just for the good of mankind. So it's more of an idea than anything. The greatest concentration of creative intelligence in the history of human civilization. This is where you go when you want to change the world. Create a website that changes the lives of millions of people and makes a billion dollars. This is where you have to be. You know, I have a return ticket. I don't have to be here or anywhere else. Just wait till you hear the idea. This is the one. I've heard that before. Remember when you and Meg came to India? Night play. That was the one. That was the website that would change the world. Blow a hole through the cosmos? That galaxy. I, I don't think I would have said cosmos. Anyway, it failed. Point is that it failed. Failure? Failure is a prelude. Failure is an overture. Failure is what happens before you succeed. Are we having lunch? I think, to a certain extent, being an entrepreneur means uh, becoming mortal. You can't succeed yeah. wildly unless you're willing to yeah. fail miserably. In the United States, particularly, I think there's a celebration of entrepreneurism. They're, they're, th they're seen as somewhat as heroes. And in other countries around the world, it's often why are you leaving your perfectly great job at a bank to go start something that probably won't work? That sounds crazy. Um, but here in the U.S., especially here in Silicon Valley, it's thought of as brave, as, you know, uh, something that's worthwhile. So that table over there in the corner, that's the table where Netscape was created. And the table behind me, over there, at that table, the conversations that created Hotmail took place. You've read the plan. Greenbacks go green. Three times G. Imagine every single transaction in the green economy occurring on one website. Our website. I want you to be a part of it. Shubash, I need you. You write the best code, the, the most elegant solutions, the most ravishing software. We'll talk money, uh, equity, stock options, a share of the business that will make you rich. I already have a salary. Wages keep you poor. Look, I make more money in a month than my, my father and his old village can dream of in a lifetime. If Steve Jobs had been happy being a wage slave, then where would Apple be? Think of a world without the iPod. It's almost unimaginable. And if Bill Gates had been happy selling off days of his life for okay, a so Okay, so you want me to come to you on the basis of what? On the basis of three sheets of paper? An idea. A great idea. And me. And Meg? And Meg. Forgive me, Jake, but you are not Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs wasn't Steve Jobs when he started out. He was just, just a guy. Look, I'm here for two weeks, and then I'm going home. OK, fine. I, I can't make you stay. This is your DECA turning down the Beatles moment. This is you walking away from the chance to save the world and make a bunch of money doing it. But before you actually make your final decision, do me one favor. Just wait here for just a, wait here for just a minute.
Mr. Bosch, I'd like to introduce you to my friend here. How you doing? James Hi. McNiven. So I'm going to leave you two to talk. I'm just going to make a few calls, OK? Oh. So Jake tells me you have a choice to make. Yeah, well, there's this new startup. Interesting. Uh, interesting concept that he wants me to be a part of. He wants me to write the code for it. I've seen it so many times here. I've seen just a conversation which, in fact, over there at that table, Sabir Bahatia and was talking to Steve Jurvetson, and he just whispered in his ear, free email. And that's right. how they launched Hotmail. They didn't have a, they didn't have a, uh, anything but a brand. They didn't have proprietary software. They didn't really know where the market was going. They never tried it, but boom, it hit and sold for 400 million. In the old days, that was a lot of money. Yeah. I see a lot of people doing fancy footwork here and a lot of them aren't real. That guy's real. He's got fire in the belly. It's just a little bit of magic. We can't put our finger on where a lot of the internet was born. It's Silicon Valley, there it's happened here. It's just. I don't know if it's in the water here or if it's in the air that we breathe or, or something, but for some reason, being in the valley, you feel like you can do things um, and you can start up things. Uh, and the only thing that you're bounded by is your imagination. So, what do you think? Do you think I should jump off that cliff to do this? I love the expression, jump and the net will appear. Of course, that only is effective from the people that actually landed in the net. But the rest aren't reporting, so I only hear the people that are reporting success with that. But if you look back and you say, damn, what would that have been like? And you try these, you can always go back and do something else. I always say, yeah, jump. So, what's it going to be?